folks. Today, I want to explain my full AI workflow, how I use AI on my next software and which tools do I use. So let me start off with the tools. What am I using? I am using Claude Code. Ever since I did that live stream with Andrew and Jacob on the Elixir Mentor channel, my life changed. Previously, I was using Windsurf and I was trying out Gemini, the SWE custom model from Windsurf, and I was kind of happy with that workflow. But then I tried Claude Code and my life changed. For the first time ever, it feels like I have an agent working and I am not constantly going back and forth with it. I'm like talking to Claude. Once we come up with a plan, I tell Claude, hey, implement it. And then 10 minutes later, five minutes later, I check the results and then we move on. Like during the period of time that Claude is working, I do not stop it because it usually goes on the right direction. It hallucinates almost never. So I have been completely converted to Claude code. Now, what about IDE? I'm using VS code. Like, isn't VS code bad for AI features? In some aspects, yeah. In terms of AI features, uh, Copilot is nowhere near Cursor and Windsurf. But I'm not using Copilot. I'm using Cloud Code. Cloud Code is my model and my tool for interacting with the model. So the only reason I'm using VS Code is because I want to preview the files that Cloud changed. That's literally it. And if Anthropic find a way, like a better way to preview all the files changes before I commit, then I feel like I can completely stop using an IDE. I can just have like five terminal tabs open and I do everything there. Because my IDE is just a file visualizer, why not use a free IDE like VS Code instead of using a wrapper? That's my logic behind it. I don't want to pay for an expensive wrapper if I'm not using any AI features from it. So I ditched Windsurf. I'm using bare bones VS Code with Cloud Code. Now, what about my workflow? How do I code with Cloud Code? I already made a couple of videos about it. So for example, if you want to know how I create the perfect Cloud MD file, in my opinion, there's a video about it. I'll link it here somewhere. But in terms of workflow, like how do I start? How do I finish? I have two steps. I have one step, which is planning. And then another step, which is implementing the technical part of that plan. I realized that AI is so fast at generating code that now it makes more sense to spend more time planning the feature rather than coding. Because like sometimes I get a little bit of anxiety and then I'm like, oh, let's implement this feature. And then it finishes in 30 seconds. And I'm like, whoa, that's amazing. Let's implement this other feature. And then like by the end of the day, I'm like, this first feature that I created is conflicting with the second feature. So I think I'm going to remove this feature, remove that. And then I spend a lot of time going back and forth with what I want. So please spend the time planning the feature. And how do I plan the feature? I created a custom slash command in Claude Code. If you don't know, Claude Code has a couple of built-in commands like slash clear to clear the current session, slash init to create a Claude.md file, but you can create your own slash commands. And then in order for that to work, you need to write a prompt and then place it inside the dot Claude commands folder. As an example, inside dot Claude commands, I have two custom commands. The first one is to plan the issues. So I'm like, hey, enter GitHub issue planning mode where we'll brainstorm a couple, a couple of ideas. And then once we feel like I got into a good point of, okay, this is good to go, good to start working on, then I ask Claude to use the GA CLI to create the issue. That's right, GH. I'm using GitHub 
issues. I'm not using linear. I'm not using Jira, Trello, or whatever other ticket tracking software. Because, to be honest, I'm too lazy and I do not want to install the linear MCP. I have the GHCLI available. I can use it right away in any project, no MCPs required, so that's great. And then, optionally, I also like adding labels and then milestones to my issues. Let's take this issue, for example, add light and dark mode theme switcher to the application. You can see that I'm using the labels enhancement, JavaScript, and I created labels for priority, which is priority low. And I also have a couple of milestones here. My default one is MVP launch, but I also have a post MVP, which is the case for this light and dark theme switcher. This is not mandatory for my MVP. And then once the issue is finished and I have a bunch of issues already created, then I created this second custom command called implement issue, where I ask, I run this command and then I paste the URL of the issue and then, well, enter GitHub issue implementation mode where I'll help you implement the issues. Then after we finish, I ask it to create a commit and close the issue. So that's pretty much my current workflow. I could as well use for tracking the tickets, the GitHub projects. So as an example on tech school, I am using the projects and on projects, you can use this Kanban view of tracking whatever's on the backlog, ready in progress done, and then you can move them around. But to be honest, I was like, man, do I really need uh, to do doing and done columns? Do I really need that? Can't I just create an issue and then mark it as resolved? Like, this looks simple enough to me. So at the time of the recording of this video, I'm not using projects. I might use them on the future if I have to track more features, but for now, I think GitHub issues are good enough. I don't like overcomplicating things at the beginning. All right, so that's my workflow. I stopped using Windsurf. I'm now Cloud Code and VS Code. I usually spend a long time, like a day or two, just talking features, nothing technical. I am straight up talking to Claude as a co-founder rather than a programmer. Then on the second and third day, then I start talking to Claude like a tech lead, an engineering manager. And from now, I think my workflow is pretty simple. If this project gets more complex, then in the future, I might record another video explaining how I improved this workflow. But that's it. And no, this project is not announced yet. I will talk more about it in the future. Spoiler alert. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. See you next time.